probably not a good thing when my opening scenes are a bike headed back into the store. And most certainly not what I expect when you buy a bike from Dick's Sporting Goods. They have some decent brands and a bike mechanic that's supposed to set up and check each and every bike they sell. But let me tell you how I got here. I get a lot of requests to look at specific bikes, and recently the GT Aggressor Pro has been a bike that a lot of people have been asking about. Plus, I've been wanting to review bikes from Dick's Sporting Goods anyway, because for a big box store, they should offer a bridge between big box and a local bike shop thanks to that bike mechanic setup. My plans are simple. I plan on buying and riding using their setup, and based on my buying experience, things are looking great. The employee, not a bike mechanic, that took the bike off the shelf actually put it on a bike rack. He checked the brakes, made sure it shifted properly, even lubed the chain. All this for a sale price of $2.99. So at this point, I'm thinking, hey, this may be the gateway mountain bike people have been looking for. At least people on a budget that shop at a big box store. What brings my attention to the Aggressor Pro is that it's a decently specced bike for the sale price. Now the normal price is $3.99. I do not think it's worth that. But if you can catch it on sale, there's a lot of good to be had. So let's look at what you get if you buy a GT Aggressor Pro. We'll start up top at the bars. They are usably wide, but I do question the stated 12mm rise. And the ends of those bars are GT branded grips, and the shifters are Shimano M310. The brakes on the Aggressor Pro are Tektro mechanical discs. These are on the front and the rear, and they feature 160mm rotors. Most of the components are generic or GT branded, like the 10 degree alloy stem. And the Aggressor Pro does have one knock on it, and that's that it doesn't have a tapered headset. But for $299, it gets a pass, because based on the overall package, you do get a few brand name components, like the SR Suntour XCT4. And while it only has 80 millimeters of travel, at least it's not the zoom that we normally see on a $299 bike from somewhere like Walmart. The 275 by 210 tires are branded Altera, but in reality, they're actually Duro. The rims themselves, also branded Altera, are alloy double wall. The frame is a 6061 aluminum alloy, and it's matte black, like every other bike on the market these days. The accents are blue and neon yellow. Now there is a sticker letting you know that those neon colors may fade. The most interesting thing about this frame is the design where the seat stay meets the seat tube. It's something they call a triple triangle design. I don't think I've ever seen this before. The drivetrain starts with GT branded polymer pedals, and those are connected to Altera forged cranks. Now this is a 3 by setup up front, and it's shifted with a Torni derailleur. And in the back, there is an 8-speed cassette. It's a Sunrace 11-34 tooth with a Shimano Acera derailleur. This is a similar setup to my Raleigh Tokul 1, which costs considerably more. And as you would expect, you get a quick-release seat post with a saddle trimmed out to match those fadable neon accents. I mentioned that I bought this bike to ride as set up by the store. So in theory, all I need to do is remove a few hang tag items and hit the trail. So after tugging on the bars and giving a test spin in the parking lot, I hit the trail on my very first GT. Instantly, I'm amazed at how darty the steering is on this bike. It's almost too responsive. It's also unexpectedly smooth up front. Now that XCT fork isn't going to win over anyone that's ridden anything better, but it is usable for an entry level trail bike. And oddly, considering that it only has 80 millimeters of travel, I don't feel it bottoming out frequently. It wasn't until I tried to stop that I ran into my first issue, and that's that the brakes don't respond well at all to input, something I hoped would bed in. I've had other mechanical disc brakes on low-end bikes, it took a bit of riding before they were working well. Unfortunately, I'm getting the audible squeal of contaminated brakes, so I'll hope for the best, but this isn't looking good brake-wise. And I'm also having another issue, and that's that I keep having chain drops. Anything more than a smooth trail tends to result in a chain drop on the inside. There are really only two requirements needed to ride any bike. Number one is the ability to propel the bike, which you can't do with chain drops. Number two is the ability to stop the bike, which is exceedingly difficult with brakes that don't work. This means that the only points on the trail where I'm not having an issue with this bike is on climbs, and I'm well established to not enjoy climbing especially in southern midsummer humidity. The only reason you climb is to get to that point where you get to have the fun downhill section. 
but with chain drops and poor brakes, especially when those two things occur at the same time, it's not fun, nor safe. It took 30 minutes of me trying to wish away the issues, hoping they would somehow mysteriously resolve themselves before I'd had enough. Chain drops are annoying, but increasingly useless brakes are dangerous, especially on a mountain bike trail. Ugh. Chain drops on this bike are so easy to happen, I can duplicate them on demand. It doesn't take much. As you can see, any little bounce will knock the chain right off the gears. And those brakes, I even tried to lock them up in grass. Couldn't get it to happen. Even when I tried to lock up the front brake, there was never any worry about going over the bars. I even hit the street with the bike and compared it to the Schwinn boundary. Now the Schwinn boundary has generic disc brakes, but as you can see, that's a night and day difference. And that gets us back to here. I'm going to let Dick's Sporting Goods fix these issues so I can give this bike another look. And I will say, the Dick staff have all been super polite and pleasant to deal with. But I was surprised when I walked back in with this bike and I got Steve Jobs. Remember when Apple released an iPhone that was so poorly designed it would lose reception if you held it like a normal phone? And Steve Jobs uttered the infamous, you're holding it wrong? I kind of got that when I walked back in with the bike. Told the manager about the braking issues and he actually said, maybe you're not grabbing the brake levers properly. I don't think he meant that the way that I took it, but still. At least he did take the bike back and 30 minutes later I got a call that it was ready. This time I decided to give it a go on city streets. Sadly, the brakes are still useless. And also, the chain will still drop at will. I can ride it over a curb and the chain comes off. But I'm holding out hope, because when I took it back, the mechanic was not there. He's only there one day a week. I have faith that once he can look at it, I can get these resolved, even though they shouldn't have been there in the first place. But on the plus side, I did notice that this may be a good dual purpose bike, because the weight distribution is such that it's good in traffic. The balance is proper. And those mountain bike looking tires, they have a hard enough compound that the rolling resistance isn't much. When you combine that with the 27.5 agility, it's an acceptable short commute bike. I have an appointment with the store's bike mechanic to let him look at it and see if he can get this bike proper. Once he does, I'll give the GT Aggressor Pro another look. I'm hoping this works out well, because I'm double invested in bikes from Dick's Sporting Goods. Leave a comment, let me know what you think about the Aggressor Pro and the experience thus far. And also, be sure to hit the thumbs up or thumbs down if you don't like this, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell to get notifications. And don't forget to visit KevCentral.com for even more content and some sneak peeks. Thanks for watching and have a great day.